Good evening, everyone. It is great joy through the mercies of our Lord Jesus to stand before you this evening as a welcome, each and every one of you, to our first night of online week of prayer with the theme, God's Act of Love. It is a blessing to be a part of this ministry under West Visayan Conference Education Department. Tonight's program, will be participated by our dynamic pupils coming from Batad Adventist Elementary School and Estancia Seventh-day Adventist Elementary School. The Bible says loud and clear in 1 Samuel 3 verses 8 to 9, Then Eli realized that the Lord is calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I strongly believed that God uses children for a special ministry task, and he sent these children with a special message for us. The word for tonight, 
that is coming from the Lord is going to nourish us and make us closer unto our God. So, I ask each of you to keep praying for our children for this week of prayer so that the Holy Spirit will move with power. As we begin the program, may our Lord of God be with us all through as we aim to know more about Jesus. God bless us all. This is my prayer. To start, let us sing our theme song. Let us pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, our Good Shepherd, and the source of all true and lasting joy, thank you for being so good to us and for your love which is beyond compare. Dear Lord, this evening, prepare our hearts as we start this online crusade. I would like to pray, Heavenly Father, for the participants for tonight's program. Bless them, O Lord, especially our speaker. Anoint his lips. Speak through him so that the words that will come out from his mouth will be a great help to all of us as we wait for your soon return. May you open our minds so that we may have eternal wisdom. And open our hearts, O Lord, so that we may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. 
Good evening. I am glad that each one of you is here. I look forward to seeing you each evening for our program because the name of tonight's program is Something from Nothing. Well, to start off with, how many of you like to play guessing games? Well, because tonight I have a guessing game for you. I'll show you a shape and you tell me what it is. Now, here's the first shape. What is this? Yes, if you answer this, it's a banana. One of the bananas in this bunch. Now, how about this? Yes, it's a boat, of course, a sailboat. I can see that this game is really easy for you. Now, does anybody know what this shape is? Of course, it's a fish, a squirrel fish to be exact. Now, what is this? Yes, it's a cow, a brown Swiss cow. Now, here's one more. What is this? Yes, it's a cute little innocent baby. You knew what those black objects were because you recognized their shapes. We see shapes everywhere we go. Even our world has a shape. It is round, like a huge ball speeding through space. Now, before I start my topic, I will be singing a memory verse song to you in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 5. Now, let us begin my topic. Long ago, the world did not have any shape. It was just a dark mass in space. Think of what it must have been like. There was no light at all, no grass, no flowers, not even any dirt, and not even a little tiny insect, and no air to breathe. We wouldn't last very long in a place like that, would we? But someone came to our world when it was like that. Someone who is so strong. Someone that can go anywhere and not die. Someone who is so powerful that he can make a lovely, bright place out of nothing. Because the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earths. Because when our world was just a dark, empty space, God the Father and His Son Jesus decided to make it into something very special. They talked about what it would look like and what kinds of plants and animals would live on it. And they to also talked about the people who would live there. Then, Jesus began his work of creation. 
it did not take him very long because the Bible says in six days, the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. On the first day of creation, Jesus made light. Jesus made light first because all living things need light. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And when Jesus spoke, it happened. When he said, let there be light, the darkness went away. Now there was light, pure light on endless water. The Bible says, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, does anybody know what Jesus made on the first day of creation? Yes, if you answered light, you are correct. Jesus made light on the first day. On the second day, Jesus made something else that all living things must have. And the Bible says, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was so. When Jesus spoke, some of the water that covered the earth rose up, 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 and it made a fleecy white covering high above the earth between this water and the water below. Jesus put clear, fresh air. The air forms the atmosphere of our earth, and the Bible calls it the firmament. Now, what did Jesus make on the first, on the second day of creation? Yes, Jesus made the firmament, or atmosphere on the second day. At the beginning of the third day, there was nothing to see, nothing but the water with the atmosphere above it. Then God said, let the dry land appear, and it was so. As Jesus spoke, the land began pushing up out of the sea, not just one little island, but whole continents of land. But something was missing. The land was bare. But Jesus had more to do on the third day. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. And it was so. Oh, how I wished I could have watched Jesus as he spoke those words. And as Jesus spoke those words, blades of grass popped out of the ground and flowers of all kinds and colors. Trees pushed their way up and in a few moments, they waved their tall branches in the sky. Jesus made everything so beautiful. I wonder how he thought of so many different kinds of plants. And just look at the flowers. Each has its own special shape, color, and fragrance. And just look at the trees. They give us shade and shelter. They make our world beautiful. And they also give us good things to eat. Now, just think of all the wonderful vegetables Jesus made. Which is your favorite? Please raise your hand. Jesus made plants of every size and shape and color. And he did all of this, all of this on the third day. Now, I'm thinking of two words that tell what Jesus made on the third day. One starts with L and the other starts with P. What are they? Yes, if you answered correctly, Jesus made plants and land on the third day. The fourth day began in the evening, just like all the other days. 
First came the dark part of the fourth day. Then a gentle light glowed over the world. But Jesus had plans for more light. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. As Jesus spoke, a glorious light pushed up behind the mountains. It shone like a ball of fire and it set all the sky alight with brilliant colors. And that was the very first sunrise. Then as the sun rose higher in the sky, it shone lovely and warm, giving life and strength to the grass and flowers and trees. Jesus put other lights in the sky too. He made the moon and the thousands of twinkling stars. Now, can you tell me three things that Jesus made on the fourth day? Yes, Jesus made the sun, the moon, and the stars on the fourth day. On the morning of the fifth day, the world was silent. There was no sound but the waves slapping on the beach and the wind rustling through the trees. Then the quietness ended and God said, let the waters bring forth the moving creature and fowl that may fly above the earth. Wouldn't it have been fun to watch Jesus as he filled the water and sky with living creatures? I wonder maybe what he made first. Maybe he made them all at once. The little silver sides and the huge whales. Fishes and sea creatures of size and shape and color. I could not even begin to think of them all, but Jesus did. And oh, the birds, such magnificent birds, so many kinds of birds, each one special and different. Well, how did Jesus think of them all? How did he teach each bird to sing its own special song? Imagine the birds enjoying their beautiful home. Imagine them choosing the right tree to make their nests. And imagine their beautiful feathers shining in the sun. Now, I'm thinking of two things Jesus made on the fifth day. They start with B and the other starts with F. What are they? Yes, Jesus made birds and fish on the fifth day. On the sixth day, Jesus walked to the beautiful world he had made. I think the birds all sang their most beautiful songs to their creator. But then Jesus stopped and the birds grew silent. Because the Bible says, and God said, let the earth bring forth the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Jesus must, must have had such fun on the sixth day. He made animals with beautiful fancy coats like the tiger, animals with interesting decorations on their head like the moose, and animals that like to climb trees like the monkey, and animals that live on the ground. Jesus made each animal unique and special, but Jesus was not finished. There was still one more kind of creature to make. They were the most important ones of all. In fact, Jesus created the whole world just for them. When everything was ready, Jesus said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. Jesus made people in his own image. He made us like himself. And because man was so very special, Jesus made him in a special way. The Bible says, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his mouth the breath of life. And man 
became a living soul. Think of Jesus choosing a lump of clay. Think of him carefully molding a man, his head, his body, his arms, his legs, his fingers, and toes. And when Jesus was finished, he breathed into the clay man, and the man became alive. God also made a wife for the man. She was the most beautiful creature of all creation. The names of those first two people were Adam and Eve. And Adam means man and Eve means life. And they were perfectly happy in their new beautiful home. Now, I'm thinking of two words that tell what Jesus made on the sixth day. Well, one starts with A, and the other starts with P. What are they? Yes, Jesus made animals and, plant and people, people, on the sixth day. Now, as the sun went down at the end of the sixth day, a beautiful sunset spread across the sky and that was Adam and Eve's very first sunset. Jesus made the world in six days, but there are seven days in a week. But at the end of seven days, there, were, there was nothing more to make. But Jesus had a special plan for the seventh day. And the Bible says, on the seventh day, God ended his work and he rested on the seventh day. Jesus rested from his work. He did not rest because he was tired. God never gets tired. But his work of creation was done, and he rested from his work. The Bible says more about the seventh day. And it says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. That means that Jesus made the seventh day special and holy. It was a special day for his people to spend time with them. It was a time for them to remember something very important. That God made the earth and everything in it. Well, the story of creation is found in the Bible. The Bible is filled with wonderful stories and vessels. Each night we will learn one of those verses. Because tonight's verse is the very first verse in the Bible. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 This verse is in the first book of the Bible. Genesis. It is in the first verse of chapter 1. That is why we say, Genesis 1.1 Now, Please join with me as we say this verse together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus did not have to make a world so beautiful. He made it beautiful because he was thinking of someone, the people who would live in the world he had created. Jesus was thinking of more than just Adam and Eve. He was looking down to the years at every person who would be born. He was thinking of you, and he was thinking of me. He wanted to us to be happy, healthy, and most importantly, comfortable. Jesus also had a special plan. He planned to make a world where we could live with him forever. But Jesus' wonderful plan was ruined. The people Jesus created decided not to obey him. Their disobedience spoiled everything. Now sin was in the beautiful new world. Sin is disobedience. Sin brought unhappiness, pain, and death into the world. Today, the world is not as beautiful as it was in the beginning. It is no longer perfect, 
But Jesus made a new plan so we could be with him forever. Jesus is in heaven now, but he is planning to come to this earth very soon. He will make a new earth where everyone who chooses to love and serve him may live there. This new earth will never again be ruined by sin and there will be no more pain and death, period. Jesus wants us to be in the new earth with him, but we do not have to live in the new earth. We must decide if we want to live with Jesus forever. Jesus is coming soon. Now is the time to choose. I know, well, I know what I want to do. I want to live with Jesus in the new earth. Would you give your hearts to Jesus? And would you live there too? If you think you want to live with Jesus in the new earth, please bow your heads and close your eyes while we pray. Dear Lord, thank you for creating this beautiful world. We know that it is not as beautiful as it was in the beginning. Now it is filled with sin and sadness. Thank you for planning to make a new earth that is filled with goodness and joy. We want to live with you in the beautiful new earth. Please help us to be ready. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, thank you for listening. May God bless you. And most importantly, this is my prayer. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before Thee with a grateful and thankful hearts and beyond blessed because of Your such a marvelous and awesome God. We praise You greatly, O Father, for granting us good life, good health, and for keeping us safe and secured in all times. Forgive us from all our sins that we have committed, that may our prayers and supplications at this moment will be as sweet incense as you accept it in your throne of heaven. Indeed, we pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless us all every single day, as we continue to serve and doing our service and commitment for being your steward and frontliner in spreading the good news to others. 
instill us the eagerness and enthusiasm in fulfilling your ministries you've entrusted upon our hands, Father. Empower us by your Holy Spirit. Possess us by your Holy Ghost. And equip us by a Christ-like character so that we could able to empower and inspire others as well through this media ministry from this night up to the last night of this program. We know, Father, that without you in our lives, we are worthless, and we are and can absolutely do nothing. So please, Father, rule in our lives and dwell in our hearts. Thank you for the assurance of salvation. Thank you for the day one message that we've heard tonight that you created us all awesomely and perfectly. Thank you for the successfulness of this ministry. Thank you for the unconditional and unmeasurable infinite love. Thank you for accepting and granting our supplications. I bring back all the glory and praises in the loving name of Jesus Christ in heaven with thanksgiving. Amen.